The channel has been a bit ice hockey heavy recently, but once I started making this video, I couldn't stop. These are some of the most interesting arenas I've come across. So here are the National League arenas. Rifi is an arena. Although this place dates back to the early 70s, it has changed dramatically in recent years. It was renovated and expanded at a cost of around $30 million. Some changes include replacing what was a wooden arched roof with a wooden gabled roof, made from even more timber. Some of it was recycled from the old roof though. When you combine that with the exposed concrete throughout, it makes for a distinctive look. Gotardo Arena is in a rather isolated place. I mean, there is an airport right there. But other than that, where are all these people coming from? Anyway, this place was being built at the same time that the previous arena was being renovated. It's not quite as interesting inside. The building materials are conventional. The layout is symmetrical, but it still seems like a great place to watch some hockey and then go snowboarding afterwards. Unlike the young whippersnappers we've seen so far, Post Finance Arena is a venue with experience. It was born in the 60s and has grown to become the largest arena in the league. That large capacity is partially due to this terrace stand here, which is the biggest of its kind in the world. It's kind meaning one that's part of an arena rather than a stadium. That has to be very intimidating for the away team especially considering that it's normally packed to the rafters. This club has the highest average attendance for ice hockey in Europe, a little over 16,000. Tiso Arena. Did you hear about that guy who broke into the Tiso headquarters? They finally caught him and now he's on a watch list. <clears throat> uh, 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 this is a completely normal looking arena. You know, just with an attached football stadium, as you do. Although, you can see through to the other side, so... Really, they just share a roof. It's a bit of a shame that the game clock isn't just a giant TSO watch. Like you often see at tennis events. Having said that, it would look a bit tacky in this context. Eichstadion Davos. Davos is situated at over 1500 meters or about a mile above sea level. And fittingly, this arena in some ways resembles a Swiss chalet. It was originally an outdoor rink, but when the club progressed to the first tier in the late 70s, they were forced to go indoors. So they built this spectacular wooden enclosure. For the first few years, it was still an open air venue but they had some huge panes of glass installed to seal it off. This is just such a cool venue, I just want to look at it for a few more seconds. Yeah. Okay, that'll do. BCF Arena is another venue that was almost completely rebuilt in the past few years. And yeah, when you take a look at the interior, it certainly doesn't look like it was built in 1983. The renovation not only increased the capacity by a couple of thousand seats and added premium seating, but one of the other objectives was to improve the acoustics for concerts. You know what, let's give it a test. Well, that sounded terrible, but I don't think it was the arena's fault. Patinois de Vermeer. What I'm loving about this league is that nearly every venue, even the old ones like this, has some distinctive design element. I suppose that the word dull is not part of a Swiss architect's vocabulary, and not just because English isn't one of their official languages. In this instance, the distinctive feature is the roof that slopes downwards from east to west, which isn't anything groundbreaking, but I like it. Stimo Arena. Before Kluten moved to this cozy location tucked away amongst the forest, they were actually playing on this pond over on the other side of town. Obviously that was well before they were attracting large crowds. In fact, they built this place way back in 1952. 
making it the oldest venue in the league. Which means it's not the most advanced technology-wise, but at least the rink stays intact regardless of the weather. Vaudois Arena Vaudois Arena was built on the site of the team's previous home to host the 2020 Winter Youth Olympics. Oh yes, I remember them. I particularly like that moment when the young person did something athletic and it was winter time. Do you recall? Uh, much like a cinema, all but the screen, or the rink in this case, is very dark to highlight the main event. It certainly works well here, but I'm glad that isn't the case in Davos. Corner Arena Yet again, this arena dates back a long way, but was almost entirely rebuilt more recently. The mid-90s in this case. Fittingly, the seating layout consists of straight lines rather than a rounded bowl. You know, because it's called Corner Arena. That means that the sight lines might not be perfect for those sitting in the corners, but it's worth the pain in the neck for the sake of corners. Uh, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Let's move on. St. Gala Cantonal Bank Arena. We have seen arenas named after a watch company and some named after banks. I'm now just waiting for a chocolate company so we can complete the trifecta of Swiss stereotypes. There are more than three Swiss stereotypes, of course, but I don't think we're going to see a neutrality arena. This seems like another nice venue. I quite like the contrast between the wooden stairs and the purple seats. Ilfus Stadium. This is not some English-speaking canton. They just decided to call it Ilfus Stadium for some reason. Man, they really do like to use wood in this country. I wonder if it has anything to do with this astute observation that I made in a previous video. Switzerland has trees, see? Could do, could do, because unlike potatoes and carrots that grow in the ground, wood, of course, grows on trees. This one's nearly ready for harvest by the looks of it. Swiss Life Arena Although this exterior looks pretty boxy and uninteresting from afar, it's a lot more detailed up close. This section in particular. I was wondering if perhaps these holes were a nod to Emmental cheese, but apparently that facade was inspired by all sorts of buildings around the world. From a Syrian mosque, to a Swedish tent thing. On three sides there is just a single tier with some detailed concrete walls above, but one side has an upper tier. It's very steep seating here. Bossard Arena has yet another unique exterior design. In fact, one of the venue's most interesting features is outside. It's this outdoor rink that is sheltered by the cantilevered overhang. Inside it is pretty conventional by comparison. There's an equally proportioned double tiered seating layout. They did only just recently install this huge 360 degree video board, which was a nice addition. And those were the National League arenas. As for my favorite, it's gotta be the Chalet. It's just such a cool place. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.